there we go. Three, two, and one. Well, Mayor Brent, uh, welcome back. Uh, Mayor's Monday here, WSAU, WSAU.com. As always, uh, we appreciate uh, appreciate you pinch hitting here as we as we get ready to close out uh, 2020. I'm, I'm known as the pinch hitter, and I'm, I'm glad I'm the closing act. So Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's uh, you, we can always count on, uh, you know, whenever you come on to it's it's you don't think sometimes of Mosinee as a place that's got a whole lot going on, a whole lot cooking. It seems like, you know, sometimes you're kind of boring, but then every now and then uh, you've got something behind the scenes that you make us say, wait, wait a minute. You guys, you guys are still a pretty big player down here in central Wisconsin there in, in the city of Mosinee. Yeah, we are. We are, you know, uh, we have been uh, anything but boring the last five years, in my opinion. And, you know, so much has happened since I came into this job in 2015 I've just seen a, a facelift to our downtown. I've seen expansions in our business park. I've seen expansions at our central Wisconsin airport. And uh, we have stayed strong on the bottom line. So, uh, you know, it's just when you get to the end of, of, of every year and reflect on, on the past, it's, it's satisfying. It reminds you why you do this job and want to keep on doing it. So, uh, very, uh, very happy to bring 2020 to close for a number of reasons, uh, but I'll, I'm happy, as I always am, to bring the year to a close and reflect on the good things we've done. Yeah, and, and part of that is the expansion at the at the business park. I know, I know that's something that you've been very proud of, and in the last two years that we've been doing this, I uh, you've spoken very highly about a lot of the businesses that you've come into partnerships and agreements with. There, Era Global being one of them. Uh, and even some things that at times have have uh, have exceeded your expectations. You know, really has. And um, Aero Global is just one great example. That was that was a partnership with the city of Mosney. We initially entered into a development agreement to provide them with the land to enter into a multi-phase expansion. And they've exceeded that uh, by, by multiple times what we had originally asked them to do. And even in the middle of a, a global pandemic, uh, they have pushed ahead with yet another phase of manufacturing expansion. And you know, with that being in a tax increment finance district, that's huge to us. That's 100% of the, the increment value created that the city is able to keep and reinvest in other projects and it's uh, uh, tax increment districts throughout the city. So very happy about that, but that's just one example, you know, in the last several years, we've uh, seen expansions in manufacturing at Green Heck. We've seen new businesses come in uh, to join the crystal finishing facility. Uh, we have seen two new businesses come into the business park and, and build new facilities, Wisconsin Mechanical Solutions and um, also transport re refrigeration moved from a different community to come to ours, talked about how easy we were to work with. And, you know, we've done our part too out there, not only working with new businesses to help them come in, we've invested out there. If you drive through, I mean, we spent several million dollars in 2015, 16, 17 on road repairs throughout the city. And a substantial part of those were within the business park. So, you know, you want to present a uh, an attractive environment when folks come in and look to invest in your community. So, uh, you know, the, the business park, you just can't overstate it. I, I'm uh, not being biased as objective as I can be. I think we've got the best business park in central Wisconsin. Well, you, you're obligated to tell the truth. You're an attorney. That's what you do. Yeah, yes. Yes. I'll always tell the truth. That's the best advice I can give you. So I'll give you that one free of charge. Too. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so give us an idea then um, as far as the Aero Global expansion goes, you said something really interesting in there. I wanted to, to kind of ask you about in the middle of a pandemic, they are still moving forward with this project. Now we're also seeing that down in, uh, in Wisconsin Rapids as well. If you have the chance to talk to the mayor, Shane Blazer, we've, we've seen, uh, their Metalco facility go forward too in the middle of the pandemic. But in, in your talks with Aero Global, did you ever get a sense that they were maybe concerned about some things as this uh, drug um, into months and, and weeks and weeks turned into months, especially considering they're a Canadian company 
And things are, uh, you know, a little more complicated when you're doing business across uh, international borders. Yeah, there was never any hesitation. And, you know, there certainly could have been um, if they wanted wanted it to be the they, they were not obligated to necessarily do any more, let alone do any more uh, this year. But they so it, it wasn't the issue of trying to take advantage of time frames that that may be expiring. I mean, they they press forward without hesitation. And I think that's a, a testament to the confidence of uh, certain sectors of our economy that, you know, our, our country gets through just about anything. And um, I, I think that is just a testament to that confidence to move forward. And, you know, you switch over to other topics too. Um, not to go off on a tangent, but uh, also the hotel. I mean, we mm-hmm. we have secured a hotel deal, and uh, looks like it is progressing at a at a good pace. All in the middle of a pandemic, and that's with an industry that basically I took it on the chops with uh, with the pandemic. I mean, you're talking about the hotel industry. So, you know, as I mentioned at the outset, when you look back at the end of the year and reflect on some of the things you've been able to see happen in your community despite the uh, odds you're up against that you have no control over. Uh, it's just, it makes you very happy about what you've been able to accomplish in partnership with others. And, and yes, and the hotel's the very next thing that we were, we were gonna ask you about because you said you're, you're still marketing it to investors. It's not a, a completely done deal yet. They do still have a, about a year or so to, to get ground broken on this project as part of your uh, development agreement with them. Uh, but you said there's investors that are looking at this as as a wise use of their money here in in central Wisconsin again. Yeah, as early as last week, uh, I, I met with some interested investors on on this project, and they were just it's it's not just about you know investing in a hotel; they're investing in our community and. Uh, they're, they're certainly not from the community, but when they came through Mosinini for the first time, they just couldn't comment enough on how impressed they were with the activity that's been going on in the city of Mosinini. And uh, as a result of that, you know, they're interested in continuing discussions here after the, the first of the year. Uh, under our development agreement, any interested investor would have until August uh, this coming year to close on the property that the city's providing for the hotel. And uh, we, we've trucked along. Um, we've already actually removed three uh, older buildings downtown that, that were either dilapidated or vacant and uh, created space for that hotel. So we, we've cleaned up our, ho- our, our downtown and uh, intended to go forward and do that regardless. So uh, it is very exciting, and I am. Uh, and now it, of course, is very exciting that this the uh, the vaccines from uh, different companies are making their way out to the the general public. And I am hopeful that the progress only continues, and that I think has given a little psychological boost um, to hotel investors, a- among others. So. I am just looking forward to what I think is going to be a tremendous 2021. Yeah, absolutely. And and the good news for residents of Mosinee, you were able to, to once again, kind of hold the line on property taxes. Uh, so things not taking too much of a tick upwards. A lot of people saying this is not the year to, to come forward and, and ask for any significant raises in that department uh, anyway. So uh, people seeing their taxes hold fairly steady going into that near the next year as well. Yeah, you know, that's another thing I'm very happy about. For four consecutive budgets in a row now, uh, we have been able to hold the line on the tax rate. Uh, the tax rate, as you know, is, is the rate that you apply to the assessed valuation to come up with your bill. And um, as I, re- I do remind people, uh, when you get your property tax bill, it's important to look at the line items. If you say, well, my, my bill went up, why, why is that? Your assessed valuation may have went up. Um, or one of the uh, uh, tax rates from the other taxing entities may have went up. You know, the city sends out your tax bill, but um, it may not uh, have to do with why you have an increase in your tax bill. That may be due to uh, the school district, the county, the technical college, maybe due to the lottery tax credit. You know, the lottery tax credit went down considerably this year. Um, 
our, our school district tax rate went up some. I think the tech tax rate uh, may have went up some, uh, but don't misstate me on that. I, I can't recall if it was the tech or not. Uh, the, the county held the line on their tax rate um, and actually, I think there was a slight decrease there, as I recall. So you have to look at all those. It was funny. I was talking to a gentleman the other day, much older than me, and he recalls a time when apparently each taxing entity sent out the tax bill for their entity individually. Oh, so yeah. it was much easier to uh, see see who was to blame or congratulate for for your tax bill. But, you know, everybody's situation is different, um, I, I have to say. Uh, there are years when our tax rate has went up and I have been thankful for our partners and other taxing entities like the school district who actually lowered their tax rate and resulted in, in not much difference in the bill because there's just there's situations that come up when that particular taxing entity just doesn't have an option to hold the line. Um, you know, in my first year, uh, I, I really didn't have that option. We were going through a, a renegotiation of a long-term garbage contract. Uh, and prices were going up. We had uh, equipment that hadn't been addressed in years at the public works department. We had to do a borrowing. We did uh, a large street borrowing to do road repairs that had gone on address. So there's some years you just uh, have to fix stuff and deal with things that result in a tax increase. Fortunately for the city, it's been four consecutive budgets now we've held that tax rate. So, and uh, as you pointed out, no better year in which to do that than 2020. You know, even if you can help somebody a little bit um, by keeping that tax rate down, you know, for a lot of people that that's a big deal. Yeah, it, it certainly is. And, uh, you know, there, you said there's a lot of other factors in there. My property, uh, I'm a homeowner now, mine got reassessed up uh, to a little bit of a higher uh, value as well. So my tax rate remained the same, but my property taxes actually, you know, taxes actually went up because of the reassessment. So a lot of moving parts in there. Um, the city, remember, just acts to collect all that money. So mm -hmm. people have already gotten that bill. Uh, how do they? How are they going to pay you once they do get to city hall? Um, are you doing some sort of remote payments? Are you are you limiting people uh, access to city hall? How's the best way to get that done? Uh, you can certainly call our our city hall and talk to our um, our folks there about uh, numerous options. But of course, you know the options generally are come in and pay directly um, or uh, send, send in your check, essentially. And we're, you know, of course, as things go on, you, we still want to limit the traffic that's not necessary to City Hall. Um, you know, you can send in your payment and accomplish it that way. Uh, but you know, some people just like passing that physical payment over and seeing the stamp paid go on that bill. So you're more than welcome to do that and come in and we'll accommodate. So, All right. One more thing we wanted to talk about before we let you go here, as we as we're recording this, uh, you know, on Wednesday, uh, you talk. We had talked a little bit uh, off camera just about some of the the Paycheck Protection Program, the stimulus uh, that was set to go through. Things have kind of, uh, you, you know, there's a few question marks around that right now uh, as we speak, uh, based on some comments by uh, the outgoing President Donald Trump. Give us an idea of. Uh, you know, what your assessment of the situation is right now and uh, and what you hope uh, businesses in Mosinee can benefit from if some of these stimulus, be that uh, business programs or direct payments to individuals do indeed go through and some of this starts to flow before the end of the year. Well, you know, I, I think the best thing that could happen is obviously the, the more money that's put into small business that has been affected by this by this pandemic is is the most important because, you know, they just have gone through such a difficult time and we're really out of options on our end at the city to do anything further than we already have. We, we drained our economic development fund that we had set aside to do uh, stimulus checks uh, to, to our local small non-franchise businesses. So it's really on, on the state at this point. And the state has done um, some disbursement to, in fact, a lot of businesses in our community uh, with the first act of CARES funding that, that they received to disperse. And, you know, now we've, we've got the federal government going through round two. And I, I guess all I can say is the more money that the federal government can put into small business stimulus, you know, I, th I think the better it is because 
you can, I certainly uh, am supportive of checks going to individuals as stimulus because people turn around and tend to spend that money in the local economy. Um, however, if there's no local economy open to stimulate, um, that, that's not going to do its job. So, you know, it's, it's disappointing when you see uh, congressional bills that are loaded with uh, stuff in the fine print that's sending money uh, to places outside of our country when uh, the whole point of the bill is to help our country. And so I, I think some, some revisions are due and it's up for debate. And, you know, frankly, Congress has had uh, plenty of time to do this and um, now trying to rush something through at the 11th hour um, just to get it out is, is unfortunate. And, you know, the work should have been going on a long time ago. Yeah. And, and uh, it, no matter what the size of those payments are, $600, $200 or $2,000, whatever's been proposed, we can, uh, you know, that's another debate that, that we could sit here and have uh, crossfire hot take versions of for, for much longer than we have for what's left on this program. But uh, get, if you said the money going into the local businesses, obviously, if people have been impacted, uh, you, you want them to take care of themselves first, make sure that their bills are paid, make sure they get caught up there. But I think you brought up another great point as well and saying, turn around and, and spend that with your neighbors, your family, your friends, go out and have a, have a pint at the brewing company. If you, if you're so able to, whatever that may be, uh, this is what's going to, this is what's got to be here when this is all cleared up. Yeah. You know, it really is that you, you cannot um, overstate the power of the velocity of money. When you put uh, an extra thousand or $2,000 in someone's hand, who in turn is going to go around and spend that in, at local business, which in turn is going to go around and pay the wages of its employees who in turn are going to go around and spend it elsewhere. You just cannot um, overstate the power of that. And so uh, a little bit can go a long way. Well, Brent, again, we always appreciate the time here. Merry Christmas, happy holidays to you and yours. Uh, we look forward to uh, one being in the same room again sometime in 2021 and, and two talking about uh, much better times ahead. Well, thank you and Merry Christmas to all your listeners and a happy new year.